Hey, we're here with our period five class, the best class, aka lots of soccer moms in here. So please disregard the uh, comments. Woo! If they're, oh my God, Woo! it's already started. You got it, Jimmy. Okay. So today we're going to focus on a few of these objectives for graphs of polynomial functions. We're going to focus on doing uh, n behavior today. All right, and we're going to focus on. Identifying, identifying the zeros or x-intercepts and their multiplicity. So these two are we're going to focus on. I'm going to do uh, a few examples in the notes, and then I'm going to switch to the delta math link so you can see how that's going to work. All right. Starting this quarter, I know we're not in the new quarter yet. We're about to be. I'm going to try to do more recording of me doing the delta math as well. That way, if you get stuck at home, you can watch the video of me doing the delta math. Yes, the gentleman. When is the, the, the one that we're doing right now, what is that due? That's due like next Monday. Okay. Or like Sunday at midnight, I think I usually say. All right, so let me talk about, first off, multiplicities. All right, do you guys see this one? Find this. I think it's the, uh, the bottom left on your slides. You see the bottom left? Okay. Now, I want to focus. I'm going to write it a little bit larger so you can see it a little easier. So I'm just going to copy what it says there at the top. Is it showing or is it delaying again? Hey, it's showing. Nice. This is amazing. Oop, square. Okay. So the first thing I want you to notice is when you are given the actual um, function written out, this is called root form. So root form or factored form. You see how they're all, there's three different factors. So what I want you to do is I want you to think opposite when you look at these. So you see how the first one says x plus 3? When you think the opposite of positive 3, what are you thinking? Negative 3. When you think of x minus 2, do you see x minus 2 here? Right. When you think of the opposite of minus 2, what are you thinking? Positive 2. Come on, Emmanuel's not the only one who can do this. All right. And then when you see the plus one, what are you thinking for the opposite of plus one? Negative one. There we go. More people. Excellent. All right. So that's the first thing I want you to think about is that these numbers here, negative three, two, and negative one, are going to be where our function is touching or crossing the x-axis. Now, the other thing I want you to think about is, do you see how a few of these have exponents? Okay. Now, what that means is that you're going to have, this is called a double root, right? Because it comes from a factor that's squared. So we call it a double root. Any ideas on what, or guesses on what you think this one will be called? Triple root. Triple root. Love it, Joma. It, it's from a cube. We say triple root when it's from a cube. That was a good try. Nice, Joma. Well done. Now, notice, did I say anything for this first one? Did I write anything here? You can say it's a single root, but if I don't write anything, you can just assume that it's just going to cross as you normally would expect. Okay? So let me show you kind of what happens when you look at these different ones. All right? Your lip gloss? I'm not sure. Uh, just look out and make sure it's not popping. No. Oh, hell. Oh, Minerva. Okay. Do you have it? Excellent. Very good. It doesn't. It doesn't help when you explain it. Sadly. Okay. So look at the first one. Do you see this is negative three? Do you see what's happening as your function is is getting to negative three? There, it's just crossing it. All right. That's called a single root. Every time you've graphed stuff, you've usually had x-intercepts. There's one right there. Now, look at this next one. Uh, let's do positive 2. Do you see that one? Do you see how it's touching but not crossing the x-axis? So when you have a double root, you're going to touch, but you're not going to cross it. So I always think for double root, I think touch, don't cross. When I have a double root, I'm touching the x-axis, but I'm not going to cross it. All right, and the last one, this one here, do you see how it's crossing, but it has this kind of, this little, uh, we call this a point of inflection, where it kind of moves as it crosses, it, it looks a little different than this one here. You see that? Right, so that's what happens when you have a triple root. All right, so it's going to be tough. You're going to have to just get your brain 
ready to recognize when you see something like this to know that it's a triple root. All right, how are we doing on that? Are we okay? Did you guys do that last year? No, not at all? Okay, all right, no worries. Okay, let's go to end behavior. Now, end behavior always comes down to two things, your degree and your leading coefficient. All right, and when I do this, I always think about my degree first. All right, so if you'll notice, we have even or odd. What are some even numbers? Two, two four, probably not gonna have anything to the sixth power, probably mostly it'll be uh, squared or to the fourth power. All right, and then our odd numbers? One, two, one three, three, five, and probably not gonna have more than five. You might get the x to the seventh power, but most likely you'll stop that to the fifth power. So whatever your power is, that should tell you how many x-intercepts you're going to have, right? But be careful, right? The multiplicities count. So if you look at this one here, right, when you count them up, this is 1 plus 2 plus 3. What's 1 plus 2 plus 3? 6. Did I have six separate x-intercepts? No, I had how many? I only had three. But because of the multiplicities, this would, if you multiplied it all out, it would be x to the sixth power. Okay, now take a look at this x to the sixth power. You see how both arrows are going up? You guys see how both arrows are going up? When you have an even degree, the end behavior, they're both going to go up or they're both going to go down. So both up or both down. That's an even degree. All right, so even is the same direction. Okay, when they're odd, that's when it's going to be different directions. So your odd ones like the one, the three, the five, maybe even the seven. They're going to be in opposite directions. So I like to do a little dance when I do this, right? Like this, like that, like this, like that, right? It's fun. What? Say it again. Like an emoji? Oh yeah, the dancing one, right? Like that. Oh, I can't do something. <laughs> Not awkward at all. Now, here's the hard part. All right, it has to do with the leading coefficient. If your leading coefficient is positive, then you're going to dance like this, the bottom left to the top right. If you have a negative leading coefficient, you're going to dance like this. Right, where it's the top left to the bottom right. Yeah, you can take a photo of that right there. All right, go and do that next to it. Okay. Now, I think the even one is easier. Right, most students don't have any issues with if your leading coefficient is positive, they both go up. If your leading coefficient is negative, they both go down. All right. Can we try one together? Okay, let's try one together. All right. Let's look at this one. So you might have to flip for this one. All right, it says, use the graph to identify the zeros and then any multiplicity. So the first thing I always tell students to do is to put a dot or circle wherever the function is touching or crossing the x-axis. So right now, circle or dot wherever the function is touching or crossing the x-axis. I'll do the same thing. Did you guys find the same three spots that I did? All right, so I'm going to write down x equals negative 3, x equals negative 1, and x equals 4. Remember to raise your hand if you have any questions in terms of what I'm writing. Okay, now let's call on some people. Michael, do you see what's happening at negative 3? Michael, do you see what's happening at negative 3? We are touching, but we're not crossing it. So what kind of root do I say is happening at negative three? A double root, Michael, what up? Nice, good job, Michael. Okay, take a look at the next one. Samantha, the next one. You see the next one, Samantha? At negative one, all right? What's happening at negative one? What's happening right there at negative one? No, no, don't worry about that. I'm asking, like, are we touching? Are we crossing? Is something interesting going on? What's happening? It's crossing. Does it cross in, like, a different way? Or is it just crossing? Is it just crossing? It's just crossing. So you know what type of root we say that is? Nice. What up? You can write single if you want. But, again, if I don't write anything, what is it assumed to be? Yeah. Cross down at where? 
Below the, the negative one. Below, like here? Lower? Lower? Yeah, right there. Right here? Yeah. No, it's got to cross the x-axis. That's what we care about right now. Which one? Sorry. Oh, no, just hit. Okay. And the last one. The last one. Donovan, what's happening at four? Are we touching? Are we crossing? Are we crossing, but it's an interesting cross? It's not actually, it is crossing. Do you see how it is crossing? It is crossing. All right, we're going from the bottom to the top. But there's something interesting going on. Do you see there's something interesting going on? Do you remember what we call this, Donovan? When it looks like that as you cross? Yes, Donovan, a triple root. Well done. Miriam, we need, may need to talk about some of this so you can catch up. Okay. All right. Everybody good on identifying the single, double, triple roots? Hopefully, if you'll get some practice here in a moment. Yes, I'm um, Is triple <laughs> So, sure, it, you can go with that. Mathematically, it's triple because we call this an inflection point. So it's like slowly increasing less, and then it starts increasing at a quicker rate. So it changes the rate at which it's increasing, right? And in calculus, we call that an inflection point. So this is kind of like pre-calculus stuff. So if you want to think it's crossing, but it's weird when it crosses, that's fine. As long as you know that's different than this one, right? Samantha noticed this was different than that. Okay, yes. Uh, Michael, do you want to explain to Hector why the negative three is a double root? It touches, it touches the uh, x-axis, but it goes back. It doesn't cross down here. Okay? All right. Go ahead and flip over to this first link so we can do some end behavior. So find this page. Flip to this page. Let's do two questions on the end behavior before we finish with our last link. So it says, what is the end behavior? Remember, it comes down to two things with end behavior. It's all about the degree and the leading coefficient. So when you guys are doing this on your own, I want you to write down what's the degree and what's the leading coefficient. So take a look at this first one. What do you notice about the arrows? They're going up. And even before that, what do I notice about both arrows? You said they're both going up, so they're going in the same direction. Do you remember what that means for a degree if they're going in the same direction? No, so that's the other, we're going to get there. It is something that is positive, but this is either even or odd. Even, right? It's an even degree, even degree, if, if they're going the same direction. Now, back to what you said, Gabriel. That is the leading coefficient. It's positive because they're both going up. What if they had been both opening down? Then our leading coefficient would be negative, but it would still be a, a same even degree. Okay. So here's the way I think of it. As you move to the left, as we move to the left forever, right, what's happening to our y values? They go up. So when I'm thinking what the answer is, I'm thinking this. As x approaches negative infinity, our y values are approaching positive infinity, right? We're going up forever, okay? And what happens as we go to the right? What happens as we go to the right forever? What's happening with our function? We go to the right forever. We go into the right forever. What's happening to this y value? Same thing, right? It's going up forever. So as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches infinity. So I just do that, and then I match it up with which one is the answer, which I think is this one. Everybody good on the end behavior for that first one? It's going to take some time, right? You've got your notes, so you can refer to the table on the front side of your notes. Let's do another one, number two. I'm going to write down the same thing, so degree and leading coefficient. All right. Take a look at number two. What do you notice about the arrows? One's going up, one's going down. So what does it tell us about the degree? That's odd. All right, it's odd. Okay? And then we have the leading coefficient, right? I always tell students, this one right here, 
Bottom left to top right is positive. Am I matching what's happening here? If, if, are my arms matching that? No, it's like this, right? So if I switch, then I have to think it's a negative leading coefficient. All right, so let's write down our answer. As x approaches negative infinity, you good, Jasmine? Okay. As we're moving to the left forever, what's happening to our y values? They're going up towards positive infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, so as we move to the right forever, what's happening to our y values? As we move to the right forever, what's happening to our y values? They're going down towards negative infinity. All right, so see which one matches that. I think it's the third one, right? All right, any questions on end behavior? In a few, I'm almost done. In a few minutes, you're about to try, okay? You okay, Michael? Okay. All right, when you're ready, flip to the next page. We got two more to do, and then I'm all done. Yes. I don't think anyone's asked me after Hector, so you can go if you'd like. What um, what should I do about um, your child? Are they going to stay in here or? Yeah. Okay. We'll watch your child. On Miriam. On Miriam. There it is. Good. Nice. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. I was uh, coaching a practice last Friday, and one of Henry's teammates. So there's seven, like turning eight. This year, he's my oldest child. And one of the kids on the team, Timothy, shows up. He's like, hey, I'm here for practice. I'm like, hey, man. I was like looking for like mom or dad or something. And uh, he saw me looking. He's like, oh, my mom just had to go to Walmart real quick. And I was like, all right, cool, no worries. I'll just look after your kid. <laughs> no problem. Here we go. Circle or put a dot next to what's happening at the x axis. All right, circle or put a dot next to what's happening at the x-axis. So I see this one at negative one, and I see this one at positive three, okay? So I'm gonna write x equals negative one, x equals positive three. Uh, let's see, let's go with Luke. How would you describe single, double, triple this root at negative one? It is single, right? If it just crosses and always go with what Minerva said, if it doesn't look weird as it crosses, which does that look weird as it crosses? No, then it's going to be a single root. Okay, uh, let's try uh, Isaac, you still with us? Okay, Isaac, take a look at number three or the root three. How would you describe this root at x equals three, single, double or triple? Say it again. It's double, why is it double Isaac? Because it touches, but does it cross? It doesn't cross. So it touches, Miriam, it touches, but doesn't cross. This is an example of a double root, okay? So the first thing I notice in the answer choices is do you see how we have two of these? See how there's two of them with the X and the threes? I'm not gonna write it like that. I mean, I'm gonna pick an answer choice, but when I write down my answer, I'm just gonna make it squared, right? Because if I have two of them multiplied together, can't I just write it as one squared? you know, one factor squared, all right? Now here's where you're gonna get it wrong if you're not paying attention. When I take these numbers and write them in my factors, I have to think what? I have to think opposite, well done. All right, I gotta think opposite. So I'm not writing x minus one, I'm writing x plus one, and then I'm writing x minus three. So hopefully if you get that to that point, you can find the answer, which is the first one. Any questions on that process? So the key thing, I'll put it here kind of at the top, right? Is you gotta think opposite. Okay, let's do one more and then I'm, I'll be done and let you guys try. Okay, so I've got a root here and a root there. So that's x equals 
zero and x equals seven. Um, let's see. Minerva, what type of root is happening at x equals zero? Single, double, or triple? Go with your, yes, very good, right? It crosses, but does it look weird? No, all right, welcome back. And then Layla, what about x equals seven? Single, double, or triple? Single is correct, it crosses just regularly. Okay, so I'm gonna write my answer. Here's how I write my answer. Now this can be a little bit weird, right? But the first one says zero. So you can think, a lot of my students will write x minus zero, but what is x minus zero? It's really just x, right? Because I don't know what I don't know what x is. X minus nothing is just x. So I'm just gonna write it as x. You can write x minus zero. It's not wrong to write x minus zero. Just hope you know. And then don't forget to think opposite. This one was a positive seven. So when I write down my answer, it's gonna be X minus seven. So if I look for the answer, it's gonna be the second one. All right, any other questions?